I heard, um, well, Sailor Jerry, from what all the history is accounting for, is that he's quite a grumpy old man, but lovably so, because it's like a, a profession in which I think that you need to be a little tough-skinned. He was a genius on all the levels because he was a, a machine man, an artist, and always very studious too. He was a, a family man, really a you know, relatively conservative guy. He didn't drink at all, uh, contrary to the popular brand of rum using his name, <laughs> which is really kind of, you know, I'm sure he's rolling over in his grave going, what the hell, you know, but, uh, you know, he took his job very seriously. One of the stories is the fact that everyone else would drink and eat and he would not eat pretty much all day because it kept you going and you didn't get sleepy because if you eat, you like to take a nap. So when there's work to be done, he was always on it. I think, I'm not sure when he arrived here, but I know he was here during World War II. Um, he opened this shop in... 1960 and named it Sailor Jerry Tattoo. I think he was one of the first tattooers here to become a licensed tattooer by the state. He was very interested um, in making it like clean, hygienic, single-use needles like a hospital. I feel like for a very big chunk of time in tattoo uh, history, it was a lot of military that were driven to get tattoos. They traveled a lot. It was a nice little moniker to receive like a little souvenir from the places or the lands that they were, because none of these boys would have ever gone there otherwise. Sort of a commemorate the uh, that moment in their life and that whatever they were, you know, putting, you know, they were putting their life on the line. They wanted to, you know, they had strong bonds with what they did for a living and, you know, or what they did to die for. And uh, and, you know, what more than, you know, how much more can you, you know, like, show yourself your commitment to something than get a tattoo, you know? And when he had the shop, it was mostly lobby to accommodate all the sailors that were coming through and the tattoo area was pretty small. I mean, I would say pretty close to this area here. And he would just, yeah, you would, he would just try to get him in and out as quick as possible. So you had an armrest that came across the door, you'd put your arm in, get a little tattoo and you're out. Uh, he would only let you in the back from what I've heard, uh, unless uh, if you were getting a full body suit or something really big where he had to lie you down. I would describe Sailor Jerry's style uh, as, I want to say, very clean and bold in that, like, you can, it's meant to be seen and recognized from far away. Um, bright, uh, I don't think he used, like, too much color. I would say for each of his tattoos, maybe he did three, like red, black, yellow, green. Um, so it was very simple, but I feel like that's kind of what made it iconic in that. So in keeping with the tradition, I feel like you, there's that integrity of doing the, the art and the craft and giving it your all to every client that comes in, even if sometimes you feel like they're not deserving. But yeah, I think that's very important. I still want to do every tattoo as well as I possibly can, given whatever circumstances that, that are there. I like to, you know, to take my job serious, but with it, with enough understanding of that it's got that it should be a fond memory to where it's not so serious. It's like uncomfortable, and uh, and I like to keep a good sense of humor and a, and a, and give people a, a fond memory because that's what outlasts the image altogether is their memory of getting it. And uh, you know, if their vision's even intact, to be able to see the resolution that's degenerated. 30 years from now, all they really have is that moment in time frozen with clarity the rest of their life, which is all anyone gets from any tattoo, ultimately. And, uh, and that should be a very important facet of the process and of, of the collecting. And, uh, you know, there's nothing more timeless for a person than marking moments in their life, which this has always been a, a location for that, which is why maritime tattoos were always, you know, it's something you'd get when you'd pull into port and you'd, you know, show up and, you know, like mark that moment in your life, you know? and. Uh, you can't, I mean, you, you know, there's, there's an indescribable, I got goosebumps. <laughs>
I feel like also being an apprentice here, I do have a lot to hold up to as far as in the legacy of the shop and the legacy of the tattooers that have come before me to this spot. And so I'm trying to learn as much as I can from all of them and trying to, uh, I guess, carry on the traditions and the values of not just uh, Harry Sumi, but Sailor Jerry and uh, Mike Malone and all those guys. So yeah, I hope I'm doing a good job of it. I am so proud, I'm so honored. That's why I feel like sometimes when you think about destiny, whether it actually is something that you agree with, um, like everything just kind of lined up and this is where I ended. So I'm totally down to have my name on this little roster. You know, there's a lot of mojo here. It feels really, it feels, you know, I, I feel very lucky to be here in this, in these walls. Thank you.